the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. Check it out, seven yards, 21 feet, baby. I really like this trigger. Everything else is very familiar to the regular shield, but this trigger, they absolutely knocked it out of the park. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Concealed Carry channel. I'm Grant McLean. Today we're gonna do a unboxing tabletop and range review of the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. This is their newest offering as part of the Shield lineup. The one we're gonna go over today is uh, just the standard model with the thumb safety, so we'll get a chance to take a look at that. Before we jump into the review, thanks so much to our Patreon supporters. We greatly appreciate all your support for the channel. And if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, go into the description below. You'll find the link to our Patreon page and it'll take you there. And you can get exclusive content. Entry is in for our quarterly giveaways, a bunch of fun stuff going on there. And of course, uh, help my coffee and gun addiction, which is great. <laughs> the other folks I want to say thank you to is Northwest Armory. If you need to get a gun, visit nwarmory.com. You can have it shipped to your local FFL or do an in-store pickup. And X-Hunt Targets. Those are the awesome reactive targets we use here on the channel. You can visit xhunttargets.com and order up a set of those for yourself. I think you'll like them a lot. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing portion of this review. If you were to go to the store and buy this gun, it is going to come in this cardboard box from Smith & Wesson. Not the most appropriate box for storage or transportation, so I would recommend to get a soft case, something that locks, or a hard case while you're at the gun store picking up your firearm. Popping open the box here, you'll see inside, sitting in the blue bag, we have your shield plus and we're going to dive into the specs and feature benefits and some of the things that I would keep in mind if you're looking for this gun as an everyday carry. You're going to have two magazines with this gun. You'll get a 13 round magazine that has a small pinky extension there, kind of like a grip extension actually because it also extends the back strap of that grip. And you're going to get a flush fit 10 round magazine. Depending on what you're wearing when you carry this gun, if it prints a little with that 13 rounder and you want to make it a little bit smaller you can put that 10 rounder in there which is nice we also have a lock and you'll have some paperwork in the bottom of the box for your warranty and your instructional safety manual there so a pretty straightforward as of right now kind of catch you up to speed if you're not sure how you know how many different variants there are of this in the shield plus lineup you're looking at about four different variants at, at stores. You're going to have, like this model here, which is your standard Shield Plus with a thumb safety. And then you'll also have this without the thumb safety. And then you'll have your Performance Center models. One is going to be a 3.1 inch Performance Center model, very similar to the other shields that were the single stack where it had the ported barrel and the ported slide, the high-vis sights. And then you also have the longer barrel version, which is, again, Performance Center. And I'm, and I'm sure, you know, those will come in a manual safety variant as well. So all in all, you're going to have a lot of different SKUs to choose from. So if you're, you know, going to be on a waiting list for this gun at your dealer, make sure that you have the right skew in mind because Smith & Wesson has a ton of skews when it comes to their parts, accessories, and, uh, and guns themselves. It can be very, very overwhelming. Let's take a look at the specs on this real quick. It is a Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. This is a micro compact gun and it's chambered in 9mm only as of right now. This variant is a 3.1 inch barrel. The overall length on this model here is 6.1 inches. The overall height, the tallest it'll be with a 13 round magazine is going to be 4.8 inches and the width is going to be 1.1 inches. 
Now, the heaviest this gun will be empty with the 13 rounder is going to be one pound, 6.4 ounces. And then it's going to be slightly lighter if you use the 10 rounder here. And of course, what I'm telling you here is unloaded. The MSRP of this gun is $553. You're going to find this in stores around $499 that I've seen on average. I haven't seen too many places have this gun in stock. It is a very popular gun, but the one the places that I am finding it are they're gonna have you know $499, maybe a little bit over $500 bucks. I got this one here from our friends at Northwest Armory and they're selling these for $4.99. So let's go ahead and jump into the range portion. We've done our usual thing and we've sent the target out at three, five, seven, and 10 yards. And our goal in this is to do five shots in two seconds. So you can see here, we have a 1.9 inch group at three yards. 5 yards, 1.9 inch group, 7 yards, a 3.3 inch group, we got 2 bullets there, 2 bullets there, and 1 right up top here. And the 10 yards, it got wild. Uh, we started getting some up top there, and that was 4.6 inches, that group there. Larger than I would definitely like it to be. We did have a couple bullets almost right on top of each other. Got a couple here in the yellow, which is nice to see. I think that this gun shoots exactly like the regular shield. It does feel better, and we'll go over that. Doesn't have a very long sight radius, so don't get too excited if your groups get bigger out at 10 yards, especially if you're doing a rapid fire situation like five shots in two seconds. I think that this was okay it will definitely improve with time let's go ahead and jump into some of the feature benefits and details on the pistol itself and we're going to do like what we usually do and start off at the top and make our way down to the uh, magazine base pad first thing is we'll start off with the sights these sights are your usual three dot sight they are metal, which is nice. They are adjustable. They're not adjustable for elevation or height, but you can definitely take the Allen wrench and move that back and forth a little bit if you need to adjust it for windage. A dovetail sight, so if you want to swap this out, you certainly can, no big deal there. It does not have a cutout for say like an RMR, at least the current production version of this does not. I wouldn't be too surprised if you say got like a performance center model you know if not now in the future that it does have a cutout for a micro red dot as we've seen in previous shield performance center models let's go into the slide here like i said there's not a cutout up top there but there certainly is room for it as with most you know smith and wessons previously and with the shield i was a little disappointed again to see that they have more of a kind of an aesthetic front serration. They have the real estate to do the front serrations. I just wish they would freaking do it. I have seen in some of their new compacts, they have now incorporated front serrations. Thank God they finally did it. I'm very excited to get my hands on one of those as soon as I can. I certainly will bring it onto the channel, but I, I was a little disappointed in this. I know that there's some aftermarket companies that are doing some front serrations on the Smith & Wessons that look very factory because they're going to use that pattern you'll find on the rear serrations up front and they look fantastic. So if you love everything about this gun and like me, you wish there were front serrations, I would probably send it in, get it milled, re -seracoded and have a very nice day. Going into the rear serrations, they are just fine. It doesn't have that kind of enhanced rear serration like you'd find on the EZ, and the spring on this is fairly heavy. I will look forward to them having a EZ version of this, which is probably the next step is a Shield EZ Plus, something higher capacity, easy to, easy to rack. If you have arthritis and tendonitis, it's got good grip on that rear serration, so you can get a nice grip on it, but keep in mind the spring is going to be a little bit heavier than you might be used to or comfortable with. 
Going into the controls, you'll see here we have your takedown lever up front. Simple, works fine. You have your slide lock release. That is not ambidextrous. As you can see, it's going to be on the left side of the guns. So kind of bummer for those of you who might be left-handed. The slide lock, like the other shield, is pretty darn stiff, even on the EZ. I have noticed that it is pretty stiff. Mag out. Holy smokes. This thing is stiff. Smith & Wesson needs to work on that. So that would be a consideration, I would tell you, is when it comes back, you load in the new magazine. If you're not used to pulling back that slide and releasing it, letting it fly, slingshotting the gun, and you're relying on that slide lock lever, I would definitely get into your local store, see if you can get one of these in your hand, and confirm for yourself whether or not that's going to work for you let's take a look at this safety this safety drives me crazy it gets a thumbs up because it's it's not very big so if you went to the store and you're like i don't want the manual safety and they said i'm so sorry all we have is the manual safety if you bought this with the manual safety on there i don't know that it's so small you wouldn't even notice the unfortunate thing is is this safety, it is stiff, it is small, and is very flush with the gun. So manipulating that safety is interesting because your hand is out of its natural firing position. It's not going to be like what you would find, say, on this little SIG P238. This safety, I can manipulate that while my hand is in its firing position. You see that? So right there as well. My hand's in its firing position. No problem. I like that safety. Now, the safety on this, it's not going to happen uh, as far as putting your hand in a firing position and manipulating that. It's not going to happen. You have to kind of turn your hand and your thumb, and you can see the position my hand is in, and pull down on that. Up for safety, down to disengage that safety, and then put your hand into its firing, you know, position. I'm not a very big fan of this. I feel that the safety on this gun is more about compliance for certain states that require safeties to be on guns than it is about actual practicality. <laughs> goes goes along there with most uh, gun control laws. <laughs> it's more about compliance than it is actual practicality <laughs> let me know what you think about that in the comments all righty so <laughs> let's talk about the mag release here real quick i have talked about this before in other smith and wesson reviews i really love their mag release it is very easy to manipulate i i don't have to you know move all my hands out of the way i have about medium-sized hands if you have small hands i think you're gonna love this mag release too you can see that my thumb is well over the top of it and i'm not having to you know move my hand very much or if at all and the amount of travel this magazine release needs to go into the frame for it to release the uh, mag is very little now you still have to apply a decent amount of pressure. It's not very stiff or anything per se, but what I'm saying is you're not just gonna accidentally push that. It's It still requires a little bit of pressure, but it just doesn't need to go very far. And if you get just a small amount of your thumb on there, you're gonna be able to release that mag. No problem. So I think for people who have smaller size hands or medium size hands, this is gonna be a great fit. The trigger, I absolutely adore this new trigger. This trigger is really good. This, I really like this trigger. They absolutely knocked it out of the park. It has just won me over versus like the previous trigger. I love the safety in the center. The safety is wide. The sides of the trigger are nice and thin. So whether you have just a small amount of your finger on the trigger or you get, you know, nice positive grip and a, and a good amount of that front pad of your finger on there, you can really disengage that, e that safety easily. The trigger is very smooth. I'm pretty impressed with this trigger. 
let's go ahead and do some trigger pulls on here. So let's pretend, you know, you're going to put your finger over this trigger and you're just going to get the tip of your finger on there. Easy to disengage that safety right there. It's, it's so simple, so light in that take up. And you have about a quarter of an inch of take up. Nothing too crazy when you're looking at concealed carry guns, right? And you're going to hit a wall here. And this is a, this is a fairly defined wall if you're pulling back nice and slow. So if you're doing some more precise target shooting, I think you're really going to like this. And then from there, it has a really crisp break. And this is about a five and a half pound, five pound trigger pull. Okay, you got that nice crisp break. The reset is not super long. It's not super short. It's just about perfect. Nice positive too. Right there. There you go. Now, I'm pulling this trigger very slowly as if I was doing some nice precision shots, right? But in normal circumstances, say you're doing a rapid fire situation, you're not going to be pulling it slow like that. When you have this trigger and you're just pulling back, it's kind of interesting that very defined wall, you almost don't even notice it. It's only you only really notice that defined wall if you're pulling back very controlled and slow for more of like a precision shot. When you're taking this and just pulling the trigger back, it, it just five, it, it's, it's, a, it's a gradual increase in tension to about five and a half pounds and snap. I really do like that. So for a new gun owner, I think that this will certainly help with not anticipating the shot. For those of you who are experienced gun owners, because if you're you know, out at the range and you have your target out there 25, 20 yards, whatever it might be, and you know, you're having a good time and you wanna see, hey, what can I get out of this little 3.1 inch barrel, right? I think that you're gonna have a lot of fun with that too because you do have that crisp break in that very defined wall. But those of you are new gun owners and you're like, hey, I'm starting up close and I'm just trying to get used to the gun. I think that you're really gonna enjoy this gun too. And I don't think that you're really gonna anticipate shots because if you're just pulling straight back, nice and smooth, you, that defined wall is very subtle. So yeah, Smith & Wesson, kudos. You guys did a great job on that trigger. This trigger is like phenomenal. I have talked with a Smith & Wesson rep about this trigger and I was like, listen, when are we gonna get this in the other MMP models? And he says, I cannot confirm or deny they might be coming out in there. Okay, I got the hint. Got it. Let's take a look at the rest of the frame here. Up front, you don't have an accessory rail. However, really doesn't matter. There are a ton of shield accessories already out there that clip on to the trigger guard. This gun is pretty much the exact same thing Everything that I'm not covering is pretty much all the exact same thing as the previous shields we're all used to. So the accessories on trigger guard, thumbs up, they fit. Even the slide from the previous single stack shields fit on the shield pluses. So that's kind of a cool thing. If you have like a performance center shield and you're like, oh, I really want to get the plus, then, and you can't find the performance center shield plus, who cares? Go buy this one. Take your slide, put it on there, take the other one, sell it, whatever. That's very cool about this. Also, those of you who already have a shield and you want to go to Shield Plus, guess what? Your holster fits. Yes. So you don't even have to go find a holster, which is really hard to find right now. <laughs> so that's a big bonus right there as well. One of the big things that they did on this frame was they actually Cerakoted the frame. And so if you pick up like one of the regular shields, the, the old ones that doesn't have it, you, you can kind of feel like, oh, it's, it's a little bit almost like slick, right? Even the, uh, the M 2.0s, then you go and pick up this and you'll, 
one, you'll notice a difference in the aesthetics. It's not as shiny. It doesn't have quite the uh, shininess to it. It has a little bit more of a, a satin finish or a, like a matte finish to it. But you'll feel that in the areas where it would normally be kind of slick and smooth, it actually has a little bit of grab to it. I really, really do like that they Cerakoted it. It'll be interesting to see over time how that Cerakote wears or if it will start to show wear spots and may not become as aesthetically appealing. Being that these are brand new guns on the market, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. You know what I mean? But I do really like that coating that they put on there. Going back into the grip here, though, the grip is way better in my opinion than the previous shield now the previous shield was very flat it didn't have a whole lot of ergonomics or palm swell to it where your hand has this natural kind of indent right there and it would create kind of space in there and and those of you who have the previous shield and have got a chance to hold the new shield plus know exactly what i'm talking about you know, obviously they went to a double stack magazine and they had to fit that in there. But the way they fit this in there is just awesome. This dimension here, it's it's all the same. It's right here, it gets wider. They've made that such a gradual difference in width. It is amazing. So the back strap, this curve, awesome. On the side panels, how it gets a little bit wider right at those palm swells, just perfect. And then it gets thin again. It doesn't feel boxy. As far as the micro compacts go and how this feels in the hand is, man, this is probably my favorite feeling micro compact out there right out of the box the stippling the grip on this is fantastic it's not too aggressive it's gonna wear down over time the more you handle the gun if you want it to be a little bit more worn down from the factory yeah take a little bit of light sandpaper kind of you know knock off some of the edges and i think you'll be very happy it's nowhere near as aggressive as like their carry size guns if you're used to their subcompact compact or their full sizes as well and then as far as the magazine goes you have that 13 rounder with a little grip extension and then you have your flush fit 10 rounder looks very good on the front there curves around that front strap beautifully everything looks fit and finish very nice overall i feel that if you have a shield and you're looking for more capacity go for it you already know what you're getting into i think that this gun shoots just like the previous version of it you know exactly what you're getting into you're just getting that much more capacity and in my opinion a better trigger if you're considering this gun you don't have one i would say that yeah the front serrations might be a deciding factor because there are other you know micro compacts out there with the front serrations and the slide lock lever if this is a little stiff for you there are other you know choices out there you can make that do have in my opinion, a better slide lock release lever. And the safety is the other thing <laughs> as well. So those things are what I would tell any of my friends or family to consider if uh, if you're looking at this particular firearm. Nice thing is, is because it's true and tried as far as that platform goes and basically they've just given you a better trigger and higher capacity i would definitely feel confident in buying one of these guns if it has all the things that i'm looking for and big plus is there's already accessories out for it because it's using a lot of the same dimensions as the previous shield holsters lights light laser combo so on and so forth the things that clip onto the front of the trigger guard but overall you guys i'm i'd love to hear from you know from those of you who have gone from the previous shield to the shield plus who have considered this gun if you decided to go with it i would love to hear your feedback on it i would also like to hear from you if you consider this gun but you want a different route what did you go with why why didn't you choose this i think this is really important for people to see Outside of that, definitely make sure to hit that like and subscribe. And um, 
If you haven't checked out our Patreon, make sure to check that out because we have a lot of other exclusive content on there. And then, of course, you can get entered in for our quarterly giveaways. If you do want to get one of these guns or you want to get a gun in general, visit nwarmory.com. Take care of those folks over at Northwest Armory as they have been very good to the channel here. They can ship it to your local FFL or you can do an in-store pickup. And if you like to get some of those awesome reactive targets that you see here on the channel, visit xhunttargets.com. Other than that, you guys, thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, we will see you here next time on the Conceal Carry channel. Bam, shield plus. All right, we ready? Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. And they can ship it to your local FL. At, or, you have a, like, okay. So no, you know, blah, 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 blah. I really do like this uh, a lot. So, yeah.